Ukraine cannot win this war. And the losses they've taken fighting the Russians in southern Ukraine have been horrific. The Russians have invited the Ukrainians now, certainly since September, to attack them in southern Ukraine relentlessly. And that's exactly what the Ukrainians have done. And they have taken horrendous losses in December, January, first part of February. And they've decided that they're going to hold Bakhmut to the last man. There are about two to 3,000 of them in Bakhmut. They're trying to put more re reinforcements in there, but Bakhmut has been a bloodbath for Ukraine. And for every Ukrainian or for every Russian soldier who was killed and wounded, there have been seven or eight Ukrainians killed or wounded. The only way he can win is with NATO help and specifically with us to come in, because obviously, with the exception of potentially the Poles, nobody else is going to join that. Biden knows and his advisors know that if he tries to commit the United States to war in eastern Ukraine against Russia, he's finished. His administration right. is finished. It's over. Right. Hey, who are you going to send? I, mean, I think out of the entire army, somebody told me that we might be able to get 50,000 combat troops out there. That means the people that close with and destroy the enemy. The, the army is in shambles. I'm sure Milley has, has given this bad news to Biden and his friends. So I, I don't see anything like that happening. I think Zelensky is just, it's just hot air. He's saying whatever he has to, to try and stay in power uh, because the Russians will win this. They will do whatever it takes. We will not. We have no vital strategic interest in Ukraine, and certainly not in Eastern Ukraine, never really did. Uh, and no one in Europe wants to march east to Moscow to end the war. Remember that Zelensky and his defense minister made a comment the other day that uh, this war will end with Ukrainian tanks in Red Square. Well, that's absurd. It's never going to happen. I don't see how this, this Ukrainian nation state survives. It was always an artificial construct. You always had too many non-Ukrainians in it. So the area that the Russians are sitting on will never be turned back to the Ukrainians. The Russians will never leave that. That's part of Russia. More of Ukraine is going to be swallowed by Russia before this is through. I dare say most of the Ukraine east of the Dnieper River. But the Russians also know that Odessa and Kharkov are two Russian-speaking cities. They were never Ukrainian. They were always Russian. I'm sure they're going to insist on those. The real question is, what do you do with the rest of Ukraine, the western, western part of Ukraine, which really is Ukrainian? Not partially Ukrainian, not Russified or anything else, really is Ukrainian. I don't know. I mean, the Poles all already seem to aspire to acquire it as part of the restoration of the great Polish-Lithuanian Empire. I don't know. С большим уважением всегда относились и относимся к Польше. Это наш сосед. Вот у нас были времена, когда мы у нас были очень близкие отношения. Были и проблемы. Мы знаем также об идеях создания у некоторой части политического бомонда там в в Польше создать великое государство от моря до моря перед Второй мировой войной об этом немало говорили это была идея фикс от Балтийского моря до Черного сейчас мы видим объятия там с руководителей Польши и Украины а идейка-то она жива и идея поглощения Украины она никуда не делась 현재 대한민국은 폴란드에 대대적인 무기 수출을 하고 있습니다 폴란드는 우크라이나를 돕는 것처럼 보이지만 사실 우크라이나 서부를 장악하려는 야심을 가지고 있다고 합니다. 역사적으로 우크라이나인들은 세계 2차 대전 기간 동안 독일과 함께 폴란드인들을 학살했었습니다. 그래서 역사적으로는 많은 앙금이 있는 관계이며 우크라이나 서부 지역은 역사적으로 폴란드의 영토였었습니다. 군사 전문가들의 의견에 따르면 폴란드는 우크라이나의 평화유지군 형태로 군대를 주둔시키기 시작할 계획이며 합병은 서서히 진행할 것으로 보인다고 합니다. 폴란드의 우크라이나 합병은 당장 경제적인 이득은 없다고 합니다. 오히려 합병에 들어가는 비용이 막대하다고 합니다. 고토 회복이라는 명분으로 폴란드가 우크라이나 서부지역 영토 일부 흡수를 고려하고 있다는 소문이 있습니다. 결국 대한민국의 무기는 폴란드 제국 건설에 이용되고 있을 가능성이 높습니다. 시청해주셔서 감사합니다.